Hi all, this is Prakash Shwasa and educator on an academy. Follow me on an academy learning gap where you'll find my many more courses. And in this lesson, we will be studying about the most important component of a diversion network, the views. And please uh, don't forget to read to and share my lecture. Your reviews means a lot to me and keep me motivated. A weir is a solid masonry obstruction put across the river to raise the water level and divert water into the canal. Just put it in your mind, weir is nothing, it's just an obstruction in your river bed. With the view, what is the view? So what does we actually want? We want to raise the water level and the second purpose is to divert the water into the canal. In Vios, the major part of entire pond, ponding of water is achieved by a raised crest and a smaller part of it is achieved by the shutters. You can see the crest shutter over here and this is the diagram of a actually vertical drop view and this is your view wall and this is your upstream side with the water level. This portion is called the launching apron and you can see a block protection is provided here and after that there is a filter which you can see these are called piles. One is provided on upstream and one on downstream. And again, an inverted filter is provided here. Then this is again your launching pad, launching apron. This is the weir wall, and this is the total different parts of a vertical drop weir. If a weir also stores water for tiding over small periods of uh, short supplies, in that case, it is called storage weir. A dam is actually used for the same purpose for this storage um, of water, but the difference between weir and dam is that a dam is of a more height and it stores water for a longer duration of period while a weir actually stores store waters for a very short duration. The different types of weirs that is there, it can be a gravity weir or a non-gravity weirs. Gravity weirs can further be classified in three different types. It can be a vertical drop weir. Uh, whose diagram I have shown you and it can be a sloping weir or a parabolic weir. Sloping weirs can also be of two types. It can be a masonry or a concrete slope weir or it can be a dry slope, dry stone slope weir. Gravity weirs, when the weight of the weir Weight of the weir, that means weight of the body and floor. If the weight of the weir balances the uplift pressure caused by the head of the water seeping below the weir, in that case, we call it as a gravity weir. It can be non-gravity weirs. In that case, the uplift pressure is actually resisted by the bending action of the reinforced concrete floor. And here the uh, floor thickness is kept relatively less. Now let's uh, study about vertical drop weir. It's a type of gravity weir and consists of vertical drop walls or a crest walls which can be provided with 
or without gates. Then I have shown you the cutoff piles. The cutoff piles the, at the downstream and the upstream end I have shown to you. These are provided at both at upstream and downstream end and can have la launching aprons. Launching aprons are also provided at both upstream and downstream ends and these are actually provided uh, to save the wheel from scouring action. Inverted filters at downstream end relieves uplift pressure. And uh, these type of wheels are actually suitable for any type of foundation. Now let's see these masonry or concrete slope wheel. These uh, wheels are actually suitable for soft sandy foundations and used when difference in wheel crest and downstream river bed is limited to 3 meters only. Hydraulic jump is formed on the sloping glaciers. You can see a sloping glaciers here. When water passes through it, filter is provided at upstream to relieve the uplift pressure and prevent rupture. Where is the filter? Let's see. This one is the filter that is actually provided filter provided at the upstream side and you can see a pile at downstream end. This is the pile of upstream end and pile at downstream end is provided with a view to prevent piping failure. Then sufficient length is provided for impervious floor so that the path of percolation is increased and exit gradient is reduced. Aprons is provided to safeguard against scouring action. Now let's see this dry stone slope wheel. Dry stone slope wheel, it consists of a body wall or a wheel wall and upstream and downstream rock fields laid in the form of glaciers with few intervening core walls. You know, Okla Weir on River Yamuna, Delhi is actually an example of such a weir. You can see this is the weir wall. And the slope provided on upstream is actually 1 in 4, while that of uh, slope provided in downstream side is 1 in 20. And these are all dry stones on these two sides and this is your rear wall. Now let's study about parabolic wheel. In parabolic wheel, the body wall is designed as a low dam. Cisterns is provided at the downstream side to dissipate energy. Here you can see that this is actually your wheel and because it is in the shape of a parabola hence the name parabolic wheel and beneath that you can see a cistern and the upstream and downstream protection what is uh, what do we mean by saying the upstream and downstream protection? Uh, these uh, are sheet piles, the filter and this uh, launching apron. These are actually provided to protect your dam. So these are, uh, this protection is similar to that of the vertical drop wheel and about which we have already studied and uh, these filters, these aprons and these sheet piles. Similar to that of vertical drop wheel. But still, the, these wheels have a tendency for failure, and it, it has been shown many a times that these wheels actually fail. The main reason of the failures being 
piping or it can be a rupture of floor due to uplift or that at times the floor gets ruptured due to suction caused by standing waves and let me tell you that standing wave and the hydraulic jump both means the same thing and the scour on the upstream and downstream of the wheel also leads to failure of your wheel. We'll study about it in details in our next lesson. Until meanwhile, you please go through the lesson, try to understand the different uh, components of the wheel and the working and uh, we'll study about their failures in our next lesson. Until meanwhile, you'll please keep studying and remain focused.